Kids clothing can be expensive, especially this time of year as they want all of the new stuff for back to school. Well, today we're helping you stretch what you already have just a little bit further. Susie Salinas is a professional organizer and a mom to three. She's got the mom cred to back it up. She joins me with tips to set up an effective hand-me-down system for your own family. Susie, always great to chat with you. You too, great to be here. And I am feeling this pain point personally. I think a lot of us think we have this system in place because we've got some boxes, maybe they're labeled, <laughs> hiding in the basement somewhere. Where do you find with your clients that many of us go wrong? Yeah, it can be a real headache and it can get out of hand really quickly if you don't maintain it. Um, and just having some bins in the basement, if they're not clearly labeled or they're spread out and you can't find what you need when you need it, it's really hard to maintain. So it's important to have a good system set up. A hand-me-down system, it saves money, obviously, as the younger kids kind of reuse the older kids' stuff. But this time of year, to set up a system as we're adding new school clothes to the closet, is this the best time to do it? Yeah, I think so. We like to do it a couple times a year, but like now is the perfect time because you um, really want to set up their closets for success before school begins. And that's where you say it begins in terms of solutions is to start in their closet now. That's right. For, for every kid's closet we organize, we always add two bins, one that's too small and one that says too big. Um, and for the too small one, it's nice to have that right in your closet. So as you're getting your kids dressed or if they're older and they're getting themselves ready, if they try on something and it's too small, they can put it right there in that bin. Um, and you don't have to be running up and down to your storage room or wherever else you keep your bigger bins. Um, and the other bin is a too big, and that's where you can keep those clothes that maybe you've been buying some school clothes over the summer or for the next season, or maybe it's clothes from an older child that you have, um, but they're ready to go right in their closet, that next size up. Um, and that makes it a lot easier um, to have because, you know, kids don't grow at a perfect pace with the season. And so it's helpful to have kind of that uh, storage for too small and for the next size up the too big. You point out it's always important to wash and dry clothes before moving them to any sort of a storage bin. Yeah, you know, moisture can lead to mold. So you want to make sure that your clothes don't have any stains on them, that they've been thoroughly washed and dried um, because you don't want to ruin an entire bin of clothes with one item that maybe hasn't been fully dried. As we approach a storage area for those long-term storage pieces, those hand-me-downs, what should we consider about where we're placing the bin? Yeah, you really want to make sure you have enough room. Um, it, ideally, you can have some storage shelves with some plastic bins. We always prefer shelves over just stacking the bins one on top of the other because um, if you need to put something in a way and it's on the bottom of the pile, realistically, you're probably just going to throw it down and not take the time to do it. So if it's on a shelf and you can just pull out the bin you need and throw it in there, it's just going to make it easier to maintain your system. We're seeing photos of really generously space storage systems that are beautiful and drool worthy. What if we don't have that much space? Yeah, use the space you have. You can always use some vacuum sealed bags. Um, the benefit of those is that it adds that extra layer um, of protection against moisture. It also shrinks everything down. The only downside is they end up being like odd shaped. And so they and stacked on. They're not great stacking on top of each other. They yeah. slip off. And so you can put them inside other bins um, and that's going to make it easier to stack. Oh, OK. Put the vacuum sealed bags inside of bins. I like that. I like that. I wouldn't have thought of that. Uh, how do you like to organize everything once you've got it contained? What, what does your system look like? Well, it depends on how much space you have. If you don't have a lot of space, you can just keep the categories really big and just categorize things by size. If you do have more space, um, it's nice to micro sort it a little and have it divided by size, by gender, and even by season if you have it, if you have the space. Um, that means, you know, when you go for fall winter clothes in that size for that gender, it just makes it so easy to find exactly what you need. Um, and then you can think about if you have the space to separate out shoes and accessories. I always like keeping the shoes in a separate bin all together yeah. and you can just clearly label it of what the range of shoe size is. But I think it's better to keep those out and not put them in with the clothes. And let's get nerdy if we can and talk <laughs> about specific bins to use. What do you like? What do you recommend? 
you know, there's the clear versus solid bin debate and everyone has their own preference. We generally use the clear with our clients because it's just easier to see. And if you've got ADHD, clear is always better. Um, but if you really don't want the visual clutter, then you can go with solid. You just need to make sure that your labeling is on point. So we really suggest using some adhesive pouches that you can add um, to your storage bins. And there's a slot for index cards and you can just write the size um, with a Sharpie on there and put it right on the bin. Don't ever just use a Sharpie directly on a storage bin because contents change. Um, and be sure to keep an extra stack of those adhesive pouches and index cards, Sharpies, extra storage bins right next to your system so that you makes it so easy to maintain it as you have you know, when you need to create like a new bin. And quickly, 30 seconds left, one more thing to consider, create a place for keepsakes. Yeah, you know, sometimes there's those really special clothes, accessories, blankets, stuffed animals for your kids that you want to hold on to. So we suggest creating a keepsake bin for each kid, and you might want one for yourself too for your special memories. I love it. Susie, thank you so much. You share such great advice, and I know you, your clients are very happy with your help, so we're <laughs> grateful for your help today as well. Where can we find more details? Um, you can always check us out on systemsbysusie.com, our website, and sign up for our newsletter to get lots of organization tips or on Instagram at systemsbysusie. We share a lot of great inspirational before and after photos. Just seeing sometimes the photos is all I need to clean out a closet, so I'm <laughs> grateful. Thank you again, friend. We appreciate it. All right. Thanks so much.